Madagascar. Allow me to begin with a statement that I'm sure some may find to be absolutely nonsensical. DreamWorks was the Looney Tunes of the 2000 decade. It wasn't just the fact that they were Disney's biggest animation rival back when they were still dominating the medium with the Pixar films, but it was also the fact that they were supplying some of the most renowned animated comedies of their time. Sure, people went to see a Pixar film to watch a good movie, but if they wanted a good laugh, then their best bet was with the boy on the moon. They already built that foundation with the first two Shrek movies, but Madagascar solidified that statement, having audiences in hysterics in 2005 and giving the studio a brand new franchise to further place themselves as the master of cartoon comedy. Until the gang became fugitives in Europe and the penguins nearly crushed the studio by wasting millions of their dollars on Cheetos. Now, I'm gonna state right now that there was a period in my early teens when this movie was my jam. I was a big fan of this film as much as I was for Shrek, so revisiting this will be like a personal nostalgia trip. This may affect the review and how I view the picture, but I'll do my best to put whatever biases aside and make this as fair as possible. But no promises though, I'm still excited to have an excuse to watch this again. So now that Alex, Marty, Melman, and Gloria are out of New York City, can this movie still bring out the laughs as much as it did all those years ago? Or did this age so badly that the movie itself needs to be shipped off as well? Let's find out. The Story It's funny how the story itself reflects the same way as Marty's feelings regarding the environment he finds himself in. At the start of the picture, Marty was tired of his life in the Central Park Zoo. Yes, he got the best lifestyle that any animal could ask for, but he was just drained from the repetitiveness of his everyday life. That's why he had one little wish that was a little shocking to his friends. I wished I could go to the wild. The wild? Whoa! <laughs> 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 And once Marty took matters in his own hooves, his wish unexpectedly came true where he and his friends are now stuck on the island of Madagascar, far away from the urban civilization of New York. With this kind of narrative, I'll admit that it's a little weak due to its predictable nature. Just like Marty's New York life, it's the same plot used again and again and again and again in family films where the lead wants something more in their lives to escape their boredom, but then gets their wish in the form of a feature-length adventure. The same thing happens here. The movie grants Marty's wish, drags his friends into the situation, and then puts them to the test if what the zebra wanted was even a good idea in the first place. Uh, nature! It's all over me! Get it off! I can't see! I can't see! I can see! However, while lesser animated films would use just that as their entire plotline, that is actually only half of Madagascar. Once the gang meets the lemurs, the story slowly transitions from Marty's to Alex's. When the lion has no choice but to adapt to his new environment, his instincts start to kick in, giving the feature a new conflict where the group's best friend could now become their enemy whose hunger for meat can get the best of him. In terms of story, this is where things get interesting. It gives a fresh update to the cliched narrative with a twist that one of the main characters could possibly be the villain and really spicing up the relationship between Alex and the gang. And while there are those two plot lines happening, there is one component that ties this all together to explain what this movie really is about. And that is the friendship between Marty and Alex. It is the heart of the picture that is the key of this being engaging, where despite having opposite views of living in New York, it genuinely presents the two as best friends. There have been plenty of times where they're not being helpful to one another and might get on each other's throats, but they can easily forgive each other and ultimately want what's best for them. But I've been thinking about what you said and I'm sorry. Whoa, 
Welcome to Casa del Wild. But of course, I can't talk about this movie without getting into the prominent comedy. This is one of those films that deliver a massive barrage of humor at a rapid pace, and every minute of it is bursting with a variety of jokes. And you know what? They all work! A lot of them are related to the wacky style of slapstick, but even the dialogue, the snappy delivery, and the eccentric personalities can give out a good laugh and will guarantee that the viewer will walk out with a handful of jokes they'll remember enjoying the most. The comedy also works great to answer questions regarding the world building and to make elements that seem like cliches enjoyable, like how the animals are able to talk, but no other humans understand them. Get me missing animals and hurry. We've got a lost zebra, probably on the way to Connecticut by now, and we're gonna need... Hello? Also, it's worth noting that this does include a bunch of pop culture references. Normally, this would sound like a complete turnoff and would ultimately make the feature feel outdated, especially for one released in 2005. However, this is not the case with Madagascar. Surprisingly, they work in a timeless way where they are less about the trends at the time and more related to their New York background, often refining the characters' personalities or emphasizing the Manhattan theme. We're from New York and uh, we... All hail the New York Giants! New York Giants! It may not seem impressive at first, but there really is so much more within the story to deliver a massively fun-filled experience. Not many movies can say that they can deliver a lot of laughs and a lot of heart, but the writing team in Madagascar made sure to accomplish exactly that. The Animation I'll be honest, I feel like there's something about Madagascar where it doesn't get enough credit as much as it should as a revolutionary animated picture. I know that sounds pretty extreme, but that is because of one overlooked fact. Madagascar is the first mainstream CG animated movie with a prominent cartoony style. And when I say prominent, I mean that it was taken to the max. It's crazy because I think back about how there was that period in the 2010s where studios want to try to be more abstract and over the top. And Sony Pictures Animation made that their signature style back in their early days. And kind of ruined it. But before any of that, Madagascar wanted to try something new that audiences had never seen before with computer animation. The principles of squash and stretch and really taking animation to an extreme have been around for decades. The influences were, of course, Tex Avery and Bob Clampett and Chuck Jones as well. CG ah! is very good at doing sort of, you know, volume preserved, you are the size you are sort of representations of something. With a Tex Avery style, the characters actually expand and contract based on the emotion of the moment. And as it is the first to really dive into the abstract realm, I gotta say that it's a pretty good start. Sure, there are better examples nowadays, and even DreamWorks themselves refine the style like with the Captain Underpants movie, but that doesn't change how this is a solid example of it. A great place to start is with the designs. I can see how, on paper, they're made out of simple lines stacked together to make a comical resemblance of their respective animal. And yet, they have a simplicity that translates well into 3D, where the lines are now a bunch of odd shapes that construct the familiar look and leave a lot of room for the animators to be creative with them. Speaking of which, what truly shines in the visuals is from the character animation where it really plays up the squash and stretch in order to emphasize the personalities and make the most out of them in whatever crazy scenarios that they're in. Probably the standout star regarding his movements is Alex, where there are several scenes where he really plays up his moves, especially when he's excited. Hoo -ha, hoo -ha. I feel like a mile high pastrami on rye on the fly from the deli in the sky! And as I said before, slapstick plays a big role in the comedy, and the film really does take advantage of that to make every scene as funny as they can be and make the characters more memorable. From Alex's already mentioned energy, to Melman's awkwardly tall size, to the Penguin's espionage-like speed. Mm -hmm. 
But while the animals can go wild, it also knows when to calm down and have a moment to get a little serious. Whenever Alex and Marty need a moment to bond and keep their friendship strong, the energy takes a back seat to let the emotion of the characters take over. Outside of the characters, there's also the backgrounds that make the movie a delight to watch. The island of Madagascar captures the look of a thriving jungle with countless of plants and different areas with the strong use of detail and really brighten up the feature with its use of colors to make it feel more alive. The look is also strong in New York, as it has a lot of that man-made feeling and have the city itself be filled with billboards and urban architecture. Also, I just want to add that New York itself is kind of funny for those who are familiar with the city. While done very well, it's weird to see a mid-2000s Manhattan and compare it to how it is today. Thanks a lot, officer. Hey, wait for the light. However, I do have to note that one drawback from the animation is that its age has become increasingly noticeable. I'm sure this was state-of-the-art at the time, but it shows how animation has significantly evolved since 2005, and it does make the textures and the flow of their movements not as strong as you'd probably expect. But what could possibly be the strongest indicator of its awkward age is from the humans. It's worth mentioning that they only appear in the first act of the movie, but, um... Oof! They don't even look finished! I don't know about you, but if I was living in a place where the people look like this, I too would want to jump in a crate and be sent off to Madagascar. <laughs> would I say that this is the best looking DreamWorks film ever made? Probably not. But this movie still deserves credit to push the medium to uncharted realms and be the first among the big names to go crazy with 3D. The Characters I think it's safe to say that Madagascar is a character-driven movie, and the hook of it all is the appeal of its larger-than-life, well, characters. And honestly, I think a big part of the franchise's success is because of the highly talented cast. The writing is already good enough to supply some well-made comedy, but the actors pushed it to that extra mile for their brand of humor to really shine and to make the personalities as memorable as they can be. Starting with the... You got Alex, who is the star of the Central Park Zoo. He loves the attention that he gets as much as he loves himself. However, he may be too comfortable with his New York lifestyle. After getting casted off, he has the hardest time trying to adapt to his new jungle environment, especially when his urge for stakes reach to the brink of uncontrollable. However, even under all that ego, he still has a soft spot for his friends, and he is aware that he only has a good life because of them. Maybe not the best at helping others, but when he does, it comes from a good place in his heart. You mess with him, you mess with me, Howard. <laughs> See? Mr. Grumpy Stripes. We make a great team, the two of us. Next up is the other main character, Marty, the zebra who wishes to go to the wild. Unlike Alex, as he lands in Madagascar, he has no trouble adapting to his new environment and relishes every moment of his freedom. But similar to the lion, he doesn't care about only himself. Yes, he has his own wants and needs, but he's also the kind that wants to share the wealth and have his friends be happy with wildlife as much as he is. It's like billions and billions of helicopters. It's shooting star. Make a wish, quick! Then you got Gloria, the largely strong hippo and mother figure of the team who pushes them to do the right thing, and Melvin, the giraffe who is constantly worried about his health and fears just about every German disease out there. Outside of the gang, there's King Julian, the flamboyant king of the lemurs with an ego bigger than Alex's who hangs around with his rational advisor Maurice and the baby like Mort. The credit to Julian being as hilarious as he is definitely belongs to Sasha Baron Cohen's performance, with his thick Indian accent making his diva-like attitude a little more special. Does anyone else have the heebie-jeebies? No, good, so shut up. 
As for the other animals, there's the Fusa that are just the hungry antagonistic predators, the chimps Mason and Phil who add some extra humor to the picture, and the penguins Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private. They have their own subplot where they escape the zoo by their own means in order to make it to their natural home in Antarctica. Well, this sucks. Like the other animals, they merely provide some extra comedy with the way that they take their mission ridiculously seriously, but they also play a significant role to the story where it's due to their actions how the gang got the idea of living in the wild and finding themselves in Madagascar. Also, on a side note, the voices are actually some of the crew of the movie, including director Tom McGrath as Skipper, story artist Chris Miller as Kowalski, assistant editor Christopher Knight as Private, and the man doing the noises for Rico is none other than Jeffrey Katzenberg himself. Africa, that ain't gonna fly. Rico! <laughs> there may be some whose roles is just to give the movie more jokes and nothing more. But thanks to having a wonderful cast, the characters are the reason why, at least the first film, is worth revisiting. It's like catching up with old friends so that you can all have a laugh. This movie was released quite a long time ago, and even if I saw this many times over the years, it still makes me laugh as much as my first viewing. Madagascar is a fantastic animated feature that is a great example of DreamWorks animation during the peak of their early years. Of course, this is a hilarious movie that will guarantee to make you laugh from beginning to end, but there is also so much more within that makes this a very strong picture in itself. Thanks to the incredible voice acting, an engaging and heartfelt story that knows how to make their cliches enjoyable, animation that should be considered a milestone in the medium, and a cast of unforgettable characters. I consider this to be one of the essential animated go-to comedies if ever you just want a good laugh and a good time. Need a movie to help put you in a good mood? Then I highly recommend to watch this and you'll be finishing it with a smile. It gives you the same effect when you subscribe to my channel where I regularly deliver some feel-good videos all about animation and a little more too. For me, this was a childhood favorite, and even nowadays, this is a really good film in its own right, and I'm happy to give this the Animat seal of approval. Marty's wish really does feel like a dream come true. Welcome back recruits, this is Animat. I hope you all enjoyed your time watching this review of Madagascar. It was definitely a perilous journey in order to make this review, but I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. In fact, it was personally a nostalgic trip to re-watch Alex and the gang and their little adventure of going from New York City to the island of Madagascar. But most importantly, if you all enjoyed watching this, then the mission was accomplished. <laughs> As you could tell, I love doing my impression of Skipper. I mean, Skipper's voice is in the same range as mine already, but it's just fun, like, uh, doing impressions, like, just out of the blue or whenever I'm bored. And usually, uh, whenever I go into my silly voice mode, uh, there is a chance that one of them will suddenly pop up as Skipper. So, uh, I just figured that considering this is a Madagascar review, might as well go and uh, have an opportunity to show off my Skipper impression. <laughs> Alright, but anyways, with that said and done, uh, now that we are finished with the Madagascar review, it is now time that we shall go and move on to a Patreon request. And this time around, it shall be from Alan Oliva. And you know what? Actually, for this little part, I might as well go back into my uh, Skipper impression, so... <clears throat> Alright, now listen up. 
If you want to be like Private Allen and you want to go and support my work and get some amazing rewards, including, but not limited, to watching my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. However, at the same time, if you would like to go and suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is go to, not go to, actually write me an email at animatesreviews at gmail.com. All right, so I think that should cover everything. Now, what is it that Private Allen has sent me to go and review? What is his request for the next Animats Classic Reviews? All right, all right, I'm done. I promise I, I, I'm done with it for now. Uh, but anyways, yes, the next request, or the next review, well, very coincidentally, uh, we are still going to be staying in the realms of DreamWorks Animation, and <laughs> funny enough, it is actually the next movie that was released right after Madagascar where this is another DreamWorks animation movie released in 2005, but it was the one right after Madagascar. However, uh, I would say though that this is a technicality because DreamWorks only released it. They didn't actually create it. It was actually made by uh, a completely different studio, a beloved studio at that. However, I will say though that things are just getting better and better and better in terms of what I am reviewing because uh, when it comes to this film, if it does count as a DreamWorks animation movie, then this is undeniably one of the best films in their collection. Don't you think we should tell them that the boat's out of gas? Nah, just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. <laughs>